Oh, hello, <laughs> everyone. Hello. 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 Have we started hello. every hello. spooky it's episode in the same way by just going, Ooh. I hope so. I mean, that's <laughs> what we do at Triple Jump as well. Oh, it's yeah. good. It really sets it's the tone. It's our go-to. Ooh. <laughs> spooky. Hello. It's a good way of flagging it up for people who are re-listening in, you know, six months' time. They're just going through the feed, da-da-da, mm. episode 100 and whatever. Ooh, you instantly oh, know. those ones. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any special spooky its guidance to help immerse people into, into this episode? Uh, go to your local Tesco. Yeah. And you know the seasonal aisle with all the Christmas stuff in it? Yeah. Burn it. Yeah. Ooh, that's Burn what Halloween's down. all about. Yeah. Uh, turn off your lights, obviously. Um yes. Uh, eat a pumpkin. I think that's mm-hmm. what you're supposed to do. Yes, yes. Whole, all of it. Whole, yeah. Is that, yeah, it sounded like you were gearing up for a third, <laughs> third thing. <laughs> and so on and so forth. Yeah, sure. Uh-huh. Uh, I think my Halloween suggestion is go to your nearest uh, corner shop, buy yourself a jammy joey, lock yourself in the bathroom, oh, candle snowy joey. Snowy no, joey. a Christmas. Oh, snowy joey. Jammy, jammy for Halloween, surely. Jam- that's like yeah. the blood. Blood, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah <laughs> Just, yeah, yeah lock yourself big on the time. bathroom and spend a couple hours making a big old spooky it's while listening to it. Oh, yeah, making yeah. a big yeah, old... Yeah, to sp- make a spooky it sounds like a bowel movement. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I think that's what he was <laughs> that getting might, at, yeah. That might be it, That was yeah. it. Oh, yeah. okay, Well cool. done. Oh, that's great. I understand. <laughs> Nobody wants to make a spooky it's. No. <laughs> Should we make a spooky it's? Well, yeah, speaking of that, let's... Yeah. Let's do it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Spooky It's, the official Spooky It's Spookcast. It's a spook versational spookcast where we spook some spookshins from Spook at Spook and obey the spook of the three spooks. Spook Ben. What? Spook uh, Ben? <laughs> Spook no, Ben? Where ev- everyone brings spook thing, spook long, <laughs> to talk spook about. <laughs> and I'm spook- Spookle? Is that where we're at? Did you do yours, Peter? Uh, I didn't do mine, but you, you, Ben didn't do the spook. I have no sp- idea. Three no spooks. clue what's going on right now. <laughs> I'm Spooker. And You're I'm spooker. Spookle. There Brilliant. I think together, <laughs> it, all the necessary information was imparted. Yes, yeah. yes. You, know, you have to work uh, on deciphering some of it, but it's in there, we promise. Well, that's just some of the, the scary nonsense that you can expect today on this very special episode of Podiots, where we've all brought spooky things along. We've mm. got some spooky questions from you at home. It's, it's going to be an exciting time. Of course, as we record this, it's not quite Halloween Yet, do you guys have some scary Halloween plans? I'm going to two not Halloween parties, I think, because uh, there's there's a, a, a potential Newcastle gathering that I've mm-hmm. heard heard rumor of, oh. um, and uh, <laughs> so both, vague. Where's yeah, it going? well, <laughs> who knows? Uh, and also after Halloween, uh, me and Amy are going to see some of her friends. Um, they were all the bridesmaids at our wedding and their partners. And it's w- the main occasion is that it's someone's birthday in like very early November, like the 4th or something. But we're just sort of making it a late Halloween thing as well. So it's a birthday gathering, but everyone has to go dressed as a scary thing. So I'm <laughs> doing double double spooks this year. Double spooky. Oh, big boy. Yeah. Nice. Just not on the actual day, I don't no. think. So far, my uh, Halloween preparation, well, our ha- Halloween preparation, uh, preparation, oh, it's boogie, our Halloween preparation this year has consisted of buying three different outfits for Karen to wear to uh, greet <laughs> oh, trick or treaters at the door. Excellent, um, that's, that's amazing. Pre- we've we've got um, a little pumpkin hat for her. It's like a pumpkin helmet with a matching human one. So you get to answer the door with a pumpkin person and a pumpkin cat. She loves that one. And good, also, good. Does she, she? Does she love that one? Oh, yeah. she, you should see the look in her face. It's just pure ecstasy. She's over over the moon to be dressed and made ridiculed of. And we've also got a little um, 
vampire cloak for her um because she's got little fangs so she's she's gonna be doing it right this year so come knock on my house you know my address my dad leaked it out there years ago so <laughs> he did, yes he did, yeah. <laughs> he did. And make sure you knock on his house not his door yeah. no just hammer on those bricks knock on the house um the good thing the easy thing for you of course mikey is that you don't have to worry about decorating the house just decorating the cat because your house is it has Halloween stuff in it all year round, and it's yep. fantastic. It's in a perpetual state of spook. It's just Halloween's when we top up and buy some new decorations. That yeah, because they're actually in the shops. <laughs> yeah, and then they just stay up for the rest of the year, and we keep adding to it. It's uh, yeah, it's it's a delight. Delivery pu- delivery workers must hate our house. It's just outside is skulls and uh, like a little <laughs> bug castle painted black and pumpkins. Yeah, and stuff. Like, oh, it's, <laughs> it's bloody castle. Adam's family again. This one, <laughs> oh, here they are. What's the a monsters. bug castle? What is that? I, I think I, I've bastardized the wording there. It's, you know, like bug hotels where it's like a little structure full of little yeah. tubes and wooden things that bugs can get in and nest in and have oh, babies in and stuff like okay. that. So we've got one in the shape of like an old style castle. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah. And it means that like all the insects live and breed right outside our front door and then come in when it gets cold. It's great. Of course. Well, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's, what, that's what you want, right? That's yeah. why you put it there. Yeah. One of the uh, National Trust places I visit on the regular uh, in the grounds has one of those that's called Buggingham Palace. Which is very nice. <laughs> it's not shaped oh, okay. like a palace or anything. It is just a box of tubes and, and things, but they've got a sign on it in Comic Sans laminated paper. So. <laughs> I like it. That's oh, nice. That's beautiful. Yeah, that's a fun one. Right. Well, thanks, everyone. <laughs> Yep, no one gonna ask me. That's fine. Oh, uh, sorry, let's, but let's, no, 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 bet, bet. no, it's no, it's all right. I just want that. I want that silence to hang there. The, oh, I felt every second of it. Yeah, as the scariest thing that's happened so far <laughs> on this episode: a lack of social inclusion. Uh, I mean, I asked, my friends I asked the didn't group. Wanna, my friends didn't want. <laughs> I asked the bloody group. My friends didn't want to ask me. Yeah, no, I mean, I answered and I said, how about you guys? So I'm. That, that's on you, Ben. I'm saying it. Wow, I'm about to say it. I feel excluded. And, <laughs> but, but uh, you're the leader. You ask the questions. We just the assume you'll leader. ask yourself, all right? I can't do that. It doesn't work like that, Michael. I need, <laughs> oh. I need reciprocal social inclusion. I can't. Maybe... Maybe, maybe we're um, subconsciously just assuming that the answer is no, Halloween's for idiots. But I don't know, this year you might surprise us. Maybe. Well, the thing is, Peter, Yeah. Well, ne- we won't know, will we? We're not going to oh, find out. We missed our chance. Oh, no. It's, it's a mystery, uh, so we'll never know. But <laughs> if you want to help support us in a way that would allow us to, let's say, hand out, well, should we... What's the correct term? Give the next generation diabetes. Yeah, okay. Right. <laughs> By yeah. purchasing plenty, plentiful chocolates and oh. sweeties galore. Then you can go to Podiots, no, streamlabs.com forward slash Podiots donations. If you give three pounds or more, you get a shout out at the beginning and the end of the show and you get uh, to join Pod Squad. And we appreciate you very, very, very much indeed. Mikey's got the first group right there. We begin with Siri play Wave of Death. Brothless ramen for wankers. Clit Eastwood. Nice. Dave can't come to the phone. Double double toil in trouble tubs. <laughs> <laughs> trouble tub. Very good. That's good. It is spook time, my dudes. Ah! Spooky Mr. Black. Ooh. Spooky McSpookerson. Ooh. Ben's weak upper body. Oh. No. Sp- Spooky it's Mr. Blobby goes on the run, Jack for 94, and Lord Cost of Living Crisis of Itch. <laughs> the spookiest of all, thank you. Oh. Terrifying. Uh, also, Podiots presents their butts, spooky name Nick Gage, the Jacobite, J- the J- Jacobite, uh, Weddy Feber the Spook Boy, put your fucking clothes in me. Um, oh, that was from the last episode, I think. Something about a wardrobe. <laughs> yeah. Crushing existential dread. Night of the living changed. Spookweth, <laughs> who was spookily generous. I mean, absolutely Whoa. terrifyingly so. Yeah. Um, I can't even begin without 
just saying how much it was to give you listeners an idea of how much Spookweth gave. <laughs> thank you, Spookweth. Thank, thank you, you, boys, thank you. For, an, for another lovely year of Vioids silliness. I know this is an odd time to be thankful, but hopefully I can at least contribute to your festive day and a half off candy purchases. Loved the Walrus Clan and the Ferret Squad as always. Thank you, Spookweth. Thank you, Spookweth. Thank you, Spookweth. Thank you. You're a legend. We've also got Stephen Skodes, Mr. Blobby, but skeleton. <gasps> uh, Ian Jasper was born in 1965. Kermit Boo Pog <gasps> and Fun Trust Hum. <laughs> We've also got Bartek Sega CDs Nuts. Very nice. Garlic Pudding and Chips. Oh, we haven't spoken about the fact that that video surfaced. No, I was, was going to wait till. Yeah, it, oh, it did come shit. to me while Mikey was doing his. But Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get talk to about it. it. We'll talk about it in a minute. Uh, Some, gone... Something has risen from the dead, you might say. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Yes. Uh, gone to Synagogue with Simon Myler. That's good. Oh. That's nice. Uh, B and Q Carpet Roll Trauma. Normal name, Nick Gage. Adolf Sex. Set your cocks back. Prince Beefcakes. <laughs> Mr. Macca. Dicking Dom in Da Bumgalow. Done that one before. Yeah. You wanted yeah. To, clearly wanted, enjoyed it so much. You wanted so, to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> Don Echo 7. Your boy Milo, who is obscenely generous. Thank you so oh, much, your boy Milo. God. Thanks, dude. Uh, and they say, hello, boys. Been listening slash watching since Billy was just a twinkle in Ben's eye, but I've never joined Pod Squad, so I thought I'd give you everything I've got or one pound for each episode. Oh, they've, oh. they've, they've announced how much they gave. You've been a great help to many, so thanks. Ooh, sincerity is spooky. Ooh. Thank you, your boy Milo. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Milo. Sorry finally. to hear about Bella. Yeah, sorry about <laughs> Bella. Hope she's doing better. Uh, and finally, we have It Is Pumpkin Spice Beans Time. Thank you to Pod Squad for this Ooh. week. Remember, streamlabs.com forward slash poddy at donations, three pounds or more to get a shout out at the beginning and the end of the show. It means an awful lot. What is your favourite uh, Pod Squad name of this week? It's easily um, Double Double Toil and Trouble Thumbs. <laughs> I've Night of the Living Changed is very yes, good. That's that one. It's a subtle it's, one. <laughs> that one's really good. Uh, That's lost on me. It's too subtle for me. I don't get that. Uh, oh, it's change. Not, it's, <laughs> I get it's it. Not it's dying. not dead. It's That's changing. very good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we are. I enjoyed the simplicity of Clit Eastwood. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Nice. Uh, Thank you. Do you want to tell us a bit about that there, Jogson? Yeah, sure. Um, thank you to Jack Squires at Jack Squire, uh, sorry at J Squires underscore comedy, who sent me a DM on Twitter uh, and said, "Hey, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but I stumbled across this video while bored at work and thought the vidiots might like it. The return of Michael Jugson, and then in parentheses it says he has been found. Um, so if you <laughs> had to, <laughs> if you had to our uh, uh, Twitter account at Vidiots Official, you'll see that we've just just reposted the video with no credit. I think, I mean, it was um, Jack Squires had found it on a Facebook page that almost certainly wasn't the original source. So it's not even like we mm. could give fair credit, but um, <laughs> he's out there. It, it's him for sure. In the comments of the, uh, the Facebook post where we found it or where Jack found it, there were some people saying, ha ha, that I know this guy, that's not him. It's definitely him. It you can tell by the way him, he right? speaks. It's just um, that ominous, spooky face. I'd recognise yeah. it anywhere, any age, and it's so yeah. Jugson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And at one point, he pulls the two guys. So there's two, for those who haven't seen it, there's a couple of guys who seem to have found Michael Jugson on a night out, <laughs> and they recognise him as Michael Jugson. They've got the camera up. He's <laughs> performing. And then he pulls them both in. He's saying, like, get your heads in. And there's something about the way he goes... Oh, that just that's him if there was any doubt there's something about the the sort of the quality of his voice there he pulls him in he goes oh it's a hundred percent michael jackson uh isn't it from or, a few years ago as well yeah that's the thing apparently so i thought this was some kind of new video and then again i think like sort of in the comments of either the facebook post or our tweet of it people were saying oh yeah this actually is from like three or four years ago so yeah. It's gone it's, um, 
unfa- it's gone under the radar for so long, even though, Peter, you said you've been somewhat regularly searching Michael Jugson on the internet, and this has just completely slipped by us all. And Yeah, I occasionally just, you know, check in on YouTube <laughs> or whatever, or Google, and just see if he's made the news or <laughs> something like that, and... I've just never come across that. I don't know how, given that it's such an old, like relatively old video. But yeah, he's there. He's still going. I mean, that was four years ago. He might have died of some sort of garlic overdose at this point. He could well have done, stunted too far. Yeah, he could. Um, Good thing about Michael Jackson, of course, on Halloween, vampires won't go anywhere near him. Hey, nice. (laughs) Safe as houses. Is there any way we could put the audio of that video in the podcast uh, kind of now-ish? Absolutely. Here you go. Wow. There he is. What a Told delight. you, that noise. Oi. That's him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I fucking did. did. It, sounds, oh. it sounds exactly like him. It's got to be him. Yeah. It's got to be. has to be. Amazing. He doesn't even quote it properly. Everyone else knows it better than he does, as is often the case with these things. It's like... Yeah. like a list celeb like uh, a list actors who've never seen their own movies. You know, he he doesn't know the the full script. He's too busy. Michael. He's too famous. Yeah, he just he just waxed lyrical. It was poetry from his mouth. He didn't need to remember it. He made an impact and bam, left. And now he just yeah. gets called up on it wherever he goes. But my God, what a legacy! <laughs> Would you all like to begin with a question? Love one. Yes, it's spooked, but yes. We begin with a question from Addy, pineapple emoji, at 2Addy underscore P on Twitter. Uh, They ask, vampires are played out. Let's shake up the formula a little. Which one type of liquid do they sustain themselves on now? And which root vegetable is now their weakness? So, Hmm. yeah, I guess vampires lusting for blood is getting a bit played out. How can we revamp the vampire for the modern age to spook a new audience? Because blood and okay. guts do nothing anymore, I guess. <laughs> okay. Uh, piss. Piss? Right. They desire piss. Because I still think there's got to be a human element. Otherwise, they're not scary anymore, are they? They're just, they're just night people, you know? Mm. Does that mean instead of biting your neck, they come and just suck your dick? <laughs> oh, or indeed your balls, because piss is stored in the balls. Piss is stored know. in the balls, yeah. Oh, yeah, I get that's it. Yeah, just oh no. I mean, it's it's not that different to the way a vampire operates, but for some reason that seems so much worse than sucking blood. It's <laughs> arguably safer. Yeah, it's not. It's yeah, it's slightly less intrusive than going at someone's neck. But no, thank you. No, I mean, piss can be replenished. It's 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 it's, it's a renewable resource. All you need is a bit of water in your bam. You're a vampire factory. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I'd quite like to see vampires that um, drink iron brew <laughs> for no other reason than I'm not drinking it, so they can have it if they want. I think it's disgusting. It tastes a bit like blood, to be honest. It's got iron in it. Maybe yeah, that's it's... why they want it. Yeah, it's an analogue. It's 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 synthetic orange blood. Yeah. Oh, cute. I quite like the idea of um, petrol vampires being a Ooh. thing. Like in the night, cruising around Asda car parks, opening up tanks and trying to, with a very long straw, sucking up all the petrol and running off giggling into the night. <laughs> That's like good. I like that. Horror. It's like yeah. people who siphon petrol into their lorry or whatever, but no, they're just drinking it. <laughs> Stick <laughs> yeah. a straw in. I mean, it's kind of cool, though. Petrol vampires. It sounds like something from Mad Max or something like that. Okay, so that's that's liquids. But what about root veg? Oh, Yeah. What what would pair nicely with piss? Parsnip? Piss nips? No. <laughs> piss nips? What the fuck oh, did you no. just call me? <laughs> Oi, piss nips! <laughs> oh, what are the root vegetables? <laughs> um, carrots? Carrot. Uh, I'm just naming root vegetables. Uh, yeah, the- I mean, I was going to say carrots for the sort of the orange, for my iron brew. Um, I think it sort of ties in. So, yeah, carrots is good. What other root vegetables are there? Um what are potatoes? Do they count? <laughs> yeah, they're technically a root veg. Oh. Um, I think beetroots are, aren't they? Swede. Ginger. Mmm, delicious. That'll keep their immune yeah. system strong. That's, we're going for, yeah, like... Ginger. Um, well, I guess my vampire is going to be petrol-swilling uh, ginger kombucha drink uh, drinking <laughs> vampires as well. They're going to be very health-focused. They want to keep their immune system healthy, so they're... they're... Oh, wait, no, it's a root, ve- uh, root vegetable that keeps them away, isn't it? 
Yeah, they don't want this. Oh, they've got to be fearful. Yeah, no, of it. it's going to drive them drive them away. Oh, what's the scariest root vegetable? <laughs> Uh, hmm. There aren't that many, or not not many sort of mainstream root vegetables. I'm sure there are some weird ones if you're a root green vegetables. grocer. Any grocers out there? <laughs> uh, beetroots, parsnips, uh, celeriac, turnips, carrots, potatoes, yucca, Ooh. and daikon radish. I'd like to see someone try and drive... A, uh, a celeriac through the heart of a vampire with a hammer. I think oh. it wouldn't go very well, and I think it would be quite enjoyable. That's like true, that. but do you normally do that with garlic? Do you try and hammer no, garlic? No, you don't, but I just, of... that's that's in the mythology that we're creating here. That's what you have to do that's with the root bird in question. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm sure at some point in history there's been a garlic tipped sword that's been used in defense of a vampire. So, yeah, 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 yeah we so. can talk about shoving vegetables into the hearts of beasts. Hmm. Parsnip and chips. Parsnip and <laughs> chips. Yeah, I, 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 I'm going to stick with carrot because I, f- yeah, I feel like, yeah, if you get like a really sharp carrot, that could be a good defense strategy. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. Carrots are in abundance, so it's a good resource to have as defense. It's true. It's very it's true. true. Yeah. 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 Thinking yeah. reasonably. Yeah. 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 <laughs> mm. Well, thank you, boys. We've given the vampires a facelift. Uh, keep an eye on your cars and your cocks. <laughs> It's, it's a harsh world out there. They're coming. <laughs> uh, which one of you boys would like to begin the spook fest with your spooky thing? I'll, I'll start. I'm happy to begin. Uh, so I've got a weird Capetia here that I... There's a little bit of me that's scared that in over 100 episodes, maybe I've done this one, but I don't think I have. And I don't know how and why I've not come around to doing this one because it's a really good story. Um Mikey, you brought along in the early days uh, the story of Spring Hill Jack, did you not? I did, I did. Uh, it's one of my favourite urban legends. I think it's really cool. Well, did you know that there was a similar in certain uh, ways uh, case in Americorn um, of strange things that happened with a sort of phantom attacker? Um, this is the story of the mad gasser of Mattoon. Oh no, it's Matoon! I just realised this. Um, garlic and chips in Matoon. <laughs> the Mad Gasser of Matoon, also known as the Anesthetic uh, Prowler, the Phantom Ooh. Anesthetist, or simply the Mad Gasser, was the name given to the person or people believed to be responsible for a series of apparent gas attacks that occurred in Matoon, Illinois, during the mid 1940s. The Phantom Anethetist kind of sounds like a a, a, a rejected Star Wars title. <laughs> yeah, it does a bit, yeah. <laughs> Star Wars Episode Zero and the Phantom, Phantom Anethetist. Uh, more than two dozen separate cases of gassings were reported to the police over the span of two weeks, in addition to many more reported sightings of the suspected assailant. The gasser's supposed victims reported smelling strange odours in their homes, which were soon followed by symptoms such as paralysis of the legs, coughing, nausea and vomiting. No one died or had serious medical consequences. Police remained sceptical of the accounts throughout the entire incident. No physical evidence was ever found, and many reported gassings had simple explanations, such as spilled nail polish or odours emanating from animals or local factories. <laughs> okay. Victims, victims made quick recoveries from their symptoms and suffered no long-term effects. Nevertheless, local newspapers ran alarmist articles about the reported attacks and treated the accounts as fact. Um, so we've got... Um, uh, the story here of some of the reported attacks. Um, uh, to begin with, actually, we've got uh, a description here. So most contemporary descriptions of the Mad Gasser are based on the testimony of Mr. and Mrs. Bert Kearney of 1408 Marshall Avenue, the victims of the first Mattoon case to be reported by the media. They describe the Gasser as being t- a tall, thin man mm-hmm. dressed in dark clothing and wearing a tight-fitting cap. Another report made some weeks later described the gasser as being a female dressed as a man. The gasser had also been described as carrying a flit gun. That's an agric- uh, agricultural tool for spraying pesticides. You know the ones? Oh. With the big... Those yeah, ones. Right. You've yeah. seen them in cartoons and stuff, uh, which he purportedly used to expel the gas. Um, 
so Sorry, here are the. I, it, no one said it yet, but yeah, this. It, I mean, it, it all sounds like farting, doesn't it? Can I just be yeah, I mean, to finally yeah. break that down? What is my yeah, is, It was Michael Johnson all along. <laughs> yes, um, yes, my yeah. alter ego. Yes, <laughs> good. So let's hear about the, the things. Yeah, <laughs> let's hear about what Michael was getting up to in 1940s Illinois. Good. Um, the first of the 1944 gasser incidents occurred at a house on Grant Avenue, Mattoon, on the 31st of August, 1944. Urban Rafe, that's someone's name, Urban Rafe, Ooh. was awakened during the early hours of the morning by a strange odour. He felt nauseated and weak and suffered from a fit of vomiting. Suspecting he was suffering from domestic gas poisoning, Rafe's wife tried to check the kitchen stove to see if there's a problem with the pilot light, but finds she was partially paralysed and unable to leave her bed. Later that night, some contemporary accounts refer to the time as the morning of the following day, a similar incident was also reported by a young mother living close by. She was awakened by the sound of her daughter coughing, but found herself unable to leave her bed. The next day, September 1st, there was a third reported incident. A Mrs. Kearney of Marshall Avenue, Mattoon, reported smelling a strong, sweet odour around 11pm. At first, she dismissed the smell, believing it to be from flowers outside of the window, but the odour soon became stronger and she began to lose feeling in her legs. Mrs. Kearney panicked and her calls attracted her sister, Mrs. Reddy, who was in the house at the time and was ready, presumably. (laughs) Yes. Mrs. Reddy also noticed the odour and determined it was coming from the direction of the bedroom uh, bedroom window, which was open at the time. Police were contacted, but no evidence of a prowler was found. At around 12.30am, Bert Kearney, Mrs. Kearney's husband, a local taxi driver who'd been absent during the time of the attack, returned home to find an unidentified man hiding close to one of the house's windows. The man fled, and Kearney was unable to catch him. Kearney's description of the prowler was of a tall man dressed in dark clothing. Yes, we've heard this in the previous section. Thank you, Wikipedia. After the attack, Mrs. Kearney reported suffering from a burning sensation on her lips and throat, which were attributed to the effects of the gas. Um, so that was the first little flurry Ooh. of uh, sort of gassings. Yeah. Uh, and it continues. Initially, it was suspected that robbery was the primary motive for the attack. After, at the time of the instance, the Kearney had a large sum of money in the house, and it was surmised that the Prowler could have seen Mrs. Kearney and her sister counting it early that evening. Local newspapers incorrectly reported this incident as being the first gasser attack. In the days following the Kearney attack, there were half a dozen similar attacks. See table below. And there's just a list of all the people who uh, reported it over different days. Um, Though none of the purported victims were able to provide a clear description of the prowler, and no clues were found at the scene of the attacks. The first specimen of physical evidence was found on the night of September 5th, when Carl and Bueller Cords of North 21st Street returned home at 10pm. After spending a few minutes in the house, they noticed a piece of white cloth, slightly larger than a man's handkerchief, sitting on their porch next to the screen door. Bueller Cords picked up the cloth and smelled it. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) Don't worry about the the gassing that's been going on in in the village in the past few days. As soon as she inhaled, she became violently ill. She described the effect as being similar to an electric shock. Her face quickly began to swell. She experienced a burning sensation in her mouth and throat and began to vomit. As with other victims, she also reported feeling weak and experiencing partial paralysis of her legs. She later hypothesized the cloak had been left on the porch in order to knock out the family dog, which usually slept there, so the prowler could gain access to the house unnoticed. In addition to the cloth, a skeleton key, described as looking well-used, was reportedly found on the sidewalk adjacent to the porch, along with a large, almost empty tube of lipstick. The cloth was analysed by authorities, but they found no chemicals on it that could explain Beulah Cord's reaction. On the same night, a second incident was reported, this time on North 13th Street at the home of Mrs. Leonard Burrell. She reported seeing a stranger break in through her bedroom window and then attempt to gas her. Public concern over the alleged gassings quickly rose, the FBI became involved and the local police issued a statement calling on residents to avoid lingering in residential areas and warning that groups set up to patrol for the gasser should be disbanded for reasons of public safety. The chief of police, C.E. Cole, also warned citizens to exercise due restraint when dis- when carrying or discharging firearms. Um... <laughs> So that was around the sort of the peak of it, really. 
Uh, it says during this period, there was also an increase in physical evidence of attacks being reported, ranging from footprints allegedly being discovered underneath windows to oh. tears being found in window screens. Oh, I don't like it. But no. by September the 12th, local police had received so many false alarms, mostly from citizens f- uh, believing they smelled gas or they'd seen a prowler, that they reduced the priority afforded to gas reports and announced that the entire incident was likely the result of explainable occurrences exacerbated by public fears and a sign of the anxiety felt by women while local men were on war service. After the police announcement, Gasser reports declined. The only incident of arguable note after that date was the case of Bertha Burke, who claimed she saw a Gasser who was a woman dressed as a man. Um, so there you go. That's sort of the main write-up. There's some proposed ex- proposed explanations which are... I mean, the main one is obviously mass hysteria, unsurprisingly. Yeah. Um, there's also potentially toxic waste or pollution in the area, which could have been sort of affecting various people. Um, and potentially the, there may have been an actual person prowling around and, you know, going through people's, looking through people people's windows and stuff. I mean, but, um, it's kind of see. Well, it's, it's all fine and well, smelling smells until you find a nap, like a napkin that's going to knock you out on your doorstep, and also a skeleton key. That's just like that's in my head. That's just as someone going around house to house, house with his magical key, making you stiff, yeah. sniff the stinky stuff and knocking you out for a bit, which is a bit terrifying. In a couple Absolutely. of instances, though, no one was forcing anyone to sniff these things. They just True. did it <laughs> themselves. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've got to yeah. get my nostrils around that delightful free <laughs> handkerchief. Couldn't imagine picking something up off the floor and then putting it that close to my nose, regardless. Even like something that looks like a hanky, the best result there is going to smell some old snots. That's mm. not oh, yeah. Smell yeah. some Stop old that. snots. <laughs> <laughs> my uh, So there's a whole table of, um, like... Well over a dozen different incidents that people reported over about a week or two. Uh, And my favorite is that on the 6th of September, Miss Frances Smith and Miss Maxine Smith, I guess uh, sisters who lived on Moultrie Avenue, um, made a report. There are no details on that. Um, And then the next entry in the table on the 7th of September, so the day after, the same two women made another report in the same area, and they said that they saw blue vapour and heard a motorised buzzing sound uh, b- that they believed to be from gassing machinery, which is written in italics. Oh, <laughs> gassing. There's no Wikipedia article for gassing machinery, is it? No. Um, so that's interesting that those two apparently had, you know, back-to-back encounters one day after the next, and they saw blue vapour and heard gassing machinery. Mm. Um so yeah, I mean it's it's an unexplained um, incident. Uh, the theory really is that it was probably mass hysteria, but you know you, you only need, as with all of these things, you only need one case of the physical evidence to be true or genuine or based on something for there to be, you know, for it not to be completely explainable away by uh, mass hysteria. If there is literally a rag with some kind of chemical on it on someone's porch, mm. or if there are strange footprints around people's windows, or someone's cut holes in their window screens, then, you know, that's that's kind of dodgy. And you have to wonder what was going on in Illinois in uh, the 1940s. 1944, was it? Yeah. Um, so that's a little bit spooky. No one yes. ever was brought to justice. And... Uh, Probably, yeah. probably just started with someone with like a leaky gas pipe in the kitchen. Um, smelt a weird smell, got like felt unwell, and like oh, that was this weird smell in my kitchen. Everyone else goes yeah. and smells it, and so like, oh, spreads like that. Yeah, that's right. So there you go. Um, let us know if uh, you're listening, Mad Gasser of Matoon. <laughs> yeah, you're still alive. Somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Let us know. Would you boys like? Another question. Thank you very much, Peter, for your mm, spooky yes, thank thing. You. You're welcome. I'd love another question. We got one from Dave Cooper uh, at Deluxe Something on Twitter. It's cut off. Sorry, I can't. <laughs> the tweet's gone now. At Deluxe Something on Twitter. Hi, Dave. Sorry. Uh, they ask, you're tasked with creating the ultimate haunted house. The only catch is that you are Brian Butterfield. What do you do? (laughs) 
Yeah, so, yeah, let's spin up mm. a Brian Butterfield uh, <laughs> equivalent of a haunted house. <laughs> I, I, I feel the, inst- the, the st- instant thing for me is um, Brian Butterfield forgot to pray, pray, play the, pray, pay the electric mm. bill, and so it's very dark and plunge into darkness, but, you know, plays it off as it's extra spooky. Yeah. Yes, uh, it will I be like a that. warehouse of some kind that he is using for several other businesses <laughs> simultaneously. So <laughs> yeah. there'll be sports memorabilia around. There'll be uh, leftover trays from treat day, I would assume. Yeah. Um, as with all these haunted houses, you know, where you're wandering around, there's people dressed in as zombies and stuff jumping out at you. It's just Brian who is running from room to room <laughs> ahead of you. And all he's, he's in his gray suit and tie, but he just puts a different hat on. Mm. Oh, um, that's cute. I, adding on from Ben's one where it's like, like an old warehouse, I imagine maybe it's like an, a working functional warehouse, but before anyone gets to go in to do their job, they have to put on a little costume so you just get people moving stuff around just as ghosts <laughs> and occasionally yeah. they say the word boo at you. Yeah, I like that. Um, and of course, you know, treat day. Mm. Um, you've, you've got to hope that Halloween falls on a Saturday. Otherwise, <laughs> he brings you for, for trick-or-treating, he brings to the door just... Toasted cold flake, um, or whatever. <laughs> ah. <laughs> hmm. Well, uh, I uh, maybe he's he's, he's um he's a resourceful man, our Butterfield. So he's just uh, using the natural colony of spiders and claiming it as an attraction. Look at all the spooky spiders. <laughs> yeah, do not get too close. I can already hear the talking heads now. <laughs> yeah, he said it was a, a a haunted house, but when I got in there. Uh, there was someone staying that they they said it was a hotel or something like that. <laughs> someone yeah. asleep in the corner. If he actually had a haunted house, I'd love to go to it. I think that'd be great. It'd be a real experience. You know, there's like that. Like, I think it's a it's a trope of hor- uh, haunted houses where like arms come out and grab at you as you're going down a thin corridor. Yeah, I just want like. Arm flailing inflatable tube men, just them f- rapidly with arms poking through holes, as rapidly just flapping up and down as you try and run through. There's bright yeah. neon arms reaching out for you as <laughs> Brian hums spooky little songs in the background to accompany it. The Booterfield Haunted House. Oh, perfect. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> Gonna have a full brand package coming for you, Brian. Yeah. Sounds good. That sounds good. Brian, get get on it. You've got a couple get of days it. to get it together. If anyone can do it, it's you. <laughs> Would you boys like a thing? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, get ready. Mine comes with some mild audio accompaniment at times. So Ooh. fingers at the ready, boys. It's a dark evening in 1974. You sit at home listening to your radio flicking through a newspaper in front of you and you notice the headline mouse tripped on marijuana the body of text depicts the story of marty a mouse who made himself home in a box of weed in an evidence room in a californian police station the police were only able to lure him out using a trap baited with marijuana seeds and then once they caught him they proceed to make him the police station mascot you giggle to yourself (laughs) <laughs> of course, the weed mouse is, is, is a pillar of the community, damn it. You, you, you close your newspaper, giggle, and turn to your radio, and you're getting ready to hunt for some rad tunes. The, the mouse story is completely a non sequitur. I just thought that was funny. I just wanted to work it in somewhere. Oh, wow, okay. <laughs> I was going to say, it's not that spooky, but it's, I like it. Oh, it's, it's, it's building a scene. I just, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> so we begin... Um, yeah, you get ready, turn to your radio, and begin the hunt for some rad tunes. Yeah, so, the music of the 70s. Oh, we got Convoy. Not a big fan of this song. Let me let me change the station a bit. Oh, what is this? Oh, it's Disco Duck. God, I hate this thing. Get it off, get it off. What's next? Oh, oh. what's this? Oh, what's going oh. on? Who's this lady? What is this? What are these seemingly random letters and numbers and spooky, uh. garbled audio? 
Welcome to the weird world of numbers stations. Ooh. So I've, I've, I've took the word spook. Um, I've gone from its, its haunting meaning to spooks, which are spies and secret communications and stuff. And it's, it's, it's a little bit unsettling, this world that's all around us, but we are blind to. Ooh, so we're going to have a little, little look into some number stations and what they are. Ooh, spooky. I mean, even without the, the, the lateral step into spooks as in spies, I think number stations are still slightly eerie in and of themselves. So. Yeah. Yeah, don't even worry about it, Michael. Don't even. <laughs> I just like to double up, you know. Yeah, yeah. These, you've probably heard them before. These like inherently just spooky sounding things. The the technology itself loans itself to this kind of spooky ambiance. But one twenty seven, five like that, right? That's what they sound like. Do, 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 do. Little jingles mixed in as well. Yeah, that oh, kind of yeah. stuff. Weird. Weird. So in an age when computers and internet rule communications, it could be that old fashioned radios are still the preferred tools for the job. In this t- in this time where everything is tracked, it's best not to leave a digitized trail that can be traced. So since World War II, so-called number stations have been transmitting coded messages via short wave radio antennas. These transmissions are eerie and weird to casual listeners nonsensical and puzzling to cryptographers and to the right set of ears may contain information that changes the course of history. (laughs) Yeah, these are just little messages that float out in the air, which to 99.99% of people are meaningless, nothing garbage. But there's someone out there who can decode that and it could mean anything. It could be the lunch orders for the for the military troop or it could be plans to dismantle a government. Ooh, and all you're hearing is 16, 24, ba <laughs> so, so, It's a bingo call. Ba- bingo, yeah. Bingo! Two fat ladies, 88. <laughs> um, we, and I have... Yet another, just another excerpt from another spooky station to mm-hmm. ooh, lay, the, lay down the spooks. Uh, okay. okay. Can press play in three, two, one. Oh, it's a German one. Very, very eerie. Old. Yeah, mm. it's... It's great. Is it just like it's all old tech? So like it's like old voice generators and just old garbled recordings. So it's oh, it's, it's a thing of beauty. Mm. But before we start diving into this whole world of secret messages and all that, it's it, it just at their most basic level, these are not complicated things. It's essentially just a radio transmitter that's very powerful. Um, this is the kind of thing that most people could set up and own. Um, and part of that is that anyone can tune in and listen to these. Um, which is an interesting choice for when you're trying to send spy messages, but it also helps disguise them. So it's just sending a message out into the world and you're not going to know what it is and it, you can tune in on it. You're never going to know this true contents. It's there for one person and one person only. Uh, they're transmitted in many, many countries. Um, which I think most of Eastern Europe still operates them at, at this time, um, but they're located across the world. But no one knows just how many because it's not like there's a there's a log of them all. They're just a occasionally turn on and throw some transmissions out in the world and shut off again so it's it's very much chance whether or not a normal person would come across one they often transmit strings of numbers on uh, numbers or letters intoned by a computerized sounding voice others send broadcast via morse code or they just emit various types of noise as always the i spent like an hour going through some stations earlier and the noise ones are the weirdest because it's just <laughs> and apparently, yeah. like people have like picked up on that, it's not just noise. Like it is a very well de- uh, coded message. Um, but there yeah, was one th- in um, one of the Neil Cicerica's albums, wasn't there? Like my mouth <laughs> silence or something. Halfway through, it was just doing radio static, and there was a man going like seven, seven, three. <laughs> and uh, I think if you like turned it into letters of the alphabet or something or other, it. it it's spelled out like Smash Mouth or, <laughs> you know, Shrek oh, or something course. like that. Oh, cute. Yeah, they've, bec- they've become quite permissious, if that's the word. We've kind of infiltrated all all areas of popular culture. They use a lot of music. Mm. And it's just, it's just a jet. It's like, you know, that nuclear alarm sound that. Yeah. It's, it's joined mm. the ranks of just inherently spooky sounds. Yeah. Uh, 
But yeah, as I was saying, yeah, the, the interesting thing about this is while it's transmitting super secret, off, potentially highly classified information, literally anyone can just tune in and listen to it. Um, um, and you can do so yourself um, if you want to have a little listen to some of these. Um, if you Google Web SDR, it's like an online radio that you can control. And like you can spend hours just flicking through all these channels. It's a lot of it is just normal radio. Um, but see, so like you had a nice like Chinese station that's playing some good music, um, some Spanish speaking country doing some kind of ah. broadcast. So like in, m- mixed in with all these normal things, you'll occasionally find just a little beep boop and some numbers. And uh, there's an active chat room there. Where, like people like flag up um, like in real time, like interesting places to go check out. So it's worth spending like 20 minutes on there having a read through because like, there's like literally like war stuff on there, like the Russian military using it. And it's just there out in the open and people can decipher it. Very interesting. Mm. Wow. I, just, I just like, I like how in plain sight it is. I think that's what interests me is like, it's, yeah. it's, yeah, it's just, it's out there and it's super spooky and special. Does it have horsedance.mp3 out there? It, it might, it might be out there. You never know. Okay. <laughs> Maybe the entire catalogue of Tom and Jerry or whatever yeah. it was. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, some of these stations have been airing their signals for decades, and usually uh, the peak was hit around the era of the Cold War, and I think there was a lot of espionage and un- undercover stuff going on, so it really peaked then. But even today, untold others are continuing to fill the airwaves, but for what purpose? No one knows. Yeah, this isn't just a relic of history, this is like an active, ongoing way of transmitting and sending messages. Mm. Um a lot of journalists have tried to untangle the mystery of number stations, but if you, it's pretty hard to decipher anything. And the best they've been able to come up with is that it is, in fact, a way of espionage and transmitting in little tidbits of information. Um, I'm going to play another spooky one just to get us all in the mood again. <laughs> oh. The voice is kind of the least spooky bit of that one. It's uh, that merry little jingle yeah. at the beginning. <laughs> so, yeah, they, um, at the beginning of the broadcast, you'll usually hear some kind of signal. For example, that one, uh, which is a nice little ditty, which kind of indicates the message is beginning. Um, it might be a simple tone, or it could be fragments of a song, as we heard, just uh, which is called the Lincolnshire Poacher Station. Um, you'd be glad to hear this is a British one because we do it right and we know how to make something sound absolutely or horrifically spooky. Um, so it's, it's a classic old folk tale they've chosen for that one. Um, mm. What follows after that is just, yeah, as, as you've heard, it's a string of just random spoken numbers of letters, sometimes compu- uh, like a digital voice, sometimes it's a real recording of a person doing it. And it repeats again and again and again. Uh and one more little spooky sample so we can continue to listen to it this is the last one for now so breathe in another cute one that sounds like the intro music for a 1960s television show that Peter loves (laughs) It's like, yeah, it sounds like, you know, it's only been uh, saved by, you know, it, it didn't make it through the purge of the BBC archives, but <laughs> someone had a VHS in their attic for yes. <laughs> not even a VHS, like a Betamax. It's been well played um, and degraded to the point of just mm, sounding scary. Horrible. Yeah. Um, yeah, that one was Cherry Ripe, which is a sweet sa- sweet name for such a, just a, a horrible little sound. Yes. Um, so yeah, this the structure of these messages alone kind of indicates it's it's super secretive and spooky um, and intended for spies avoiding detection. It's a very but it's all linked together with like a very simple form of encryption where it's mathematically impossible to to crack any of these. So you generally, I don't think there's any public um, translations of these things because it's like the person to receive it has like a bit of paper with the instructions to decode it and when they're done that's it it'll never work for another broadcast it's for that one instance and usually like in a pinch um these codes like written just on bits of paper so that if they're captured they just gobble it up and destroy mm. it straight away it's all built to be like 
we need this one broadcast at this one time for this one person that's who can hear it but uh yeah what what, what kind of instances of these things been used in so uh from 1940 hello what kind of instances of these things been used in well, I'm glad you asked, Ben. <laughs> so from 1945 to 56, the CIA and British Secret Intelligence Service dispatched agents to support anti-Soviet guerrillas in the Baltic states, Belarus and Ukraine. And uh, when they like found these people on the ground, they were captured with little radio transmitters and code books. Ooh. Mm. So it's, it isn't like, this isn't an offshoot of like weird underground c- groups. It's like the government's using this stuff. Oh, and they're just mm. sending men out with little radio. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're not just a, a, a relic of history. There's been cases in 2001. Uh, there was someone who worked for the U.S. Defense Intelligence Agency, and they were arrested. And in their home, they found out that they were actually spying for Cuba. And at the home, they had a whole radio set up um, uh, that were using to receive signals and a code sheet. Uh, 2011, German authorities ar- arrested two people for being Russian spies. Um, they moved to Germany in 1988, and they kept working for 30 years as undercover spies. Uh, again, they had this whole transmission system in their house, um, and they found out that the Russians had been paying them a hundred grand a month for their work for the wow. entire time. Jeez. So, Obviously, they've got no idea. I, I imagine they didn't really let out any secrets, but it's like, oh, what, what what were they doing to be cemented in there for 30 years and be paid that kind of money? Um, even more recently, after a halt in activity from 2016, North Korea officially resumed uh, broadcasting encoded messages. But this, not just from like really specific stations that are hard to find, but actually from their like state radio, uh, Radio Pyongyang, um, so oh. as just part of a normal broadcast, they slip, slip in these codes. Uh, it says here that <laughs> in, um, uh, they were disguised as mathematics or physics problems for distant university students to solve. Sure. <laughs> oh, wow. Sure. Okay. <laughs> I like that as a code name for a spy. Ah, yes, I'm a, a distant university student. <laughs> <laughs> And my favourite, um, there's one. This is, there's no information on this one, but I just have the name of the the broadcast, which is titled Hitler's Birthday, which is um, oh, Hitler's Birthday. Happy Maybe Birthday, the, Adolf. Yeah, it was a one time broadcast uh, some years ago on the 20th of April, and never again. And that's literally all the information online about it. I don't know if they're just saying, oh well, it happened on this day, so we'll call it that, or if there was something in that broadcast which alluded mm. to it, but they've dubbed it that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and it's, it's it's still going on to this day. A lot of numbers have declined. Like you, you can go out there and find stuff. Um, if you want to listen to some uh, recordings, there's the the Conet Project, I believe, uh, the C O N E T Project, which is like a compilation of all the spooky stuff that people have found. People have spent like years just crawling through thousands and thousands of frequencies and like logging and seeing what goes what goes on. Um, yeah, uh, the website I gave earlier, which I've already forgotten the name of, uh, Web SDR. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good resource. Just having a little look around, having a hunt around, and being spooked. Um, and I, I did say earlier that we've never actually been able to decode a single message from these, but that was a lie. There is one oh. that has been decoded. Okay, and I, I, I have the privilege of sharing it with you today for the first time. <laughs> ever we have a decoded message so you've tuned your radio in you've got your notebook at the handy at, at the ready mm. and you hear this hello poddy oh, <laughs> it's me nervous cats from dick and dom in double Mill. i'm sorry i'm sorry <laughs> i thought there was a part of me that thought when i press play on this it's gonna be the stoke on trent song isn't it That's what this it is very nearly was that was my original thought but i thought no, let's have a sake. little coded message from dave chapman you this is how he sent it to you didn't he yeah yeah it sounded just like that i had to tune my radio in i don't have a physical radio <laughs> but i had to tune it in anyway <laughs> I I was convinced it was all, and obviously until Dave kicked in. But I was convinced it was genuine. I was going to be a bit cynical and go, "Oh yeah, well, I mean, this one's Morse code, so obviously they translated it, Michael. It's not very, uh, it's not very interesting. I'm more interested in the numbers." Uh, but wow, yeah. I'm sorry for leading you down a path but, uh, and throwing Damn it back it. in your face. But I felt like I needed a bit of idiots nonsense and all this spooky Cold War espionage and undercover codes Ooh. absolutely 
Wow. Well, you thank go. you, Michael. You're very yeah, welcome. Thank you very much. Would you boys like a question? Mm-hmm. Yes. And let's go for Tommy the Wank Engine at Triggerly Seride T on Twitter. He says, I've always found it ironic that Ben isn't a big fan of spooks. I know he's better. I know he's better now, it says in brackets. <laughs> I got better. <laughs> well done, Ben. We're all really proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, because you're a huge fan of Bloodborne and such. Because those games games seem pretty creepy. I mean, mm. uh, you, you you don't like jump scares, but I think you're all right with a bit of creep, aren't you? Yeah, and I'm. I'm I guess they're more gothic, really, and gory, aren't they? Than actually, yeah, they scary. They're s- scary in places, but it's more atmospheric. I don't like the psychological horror stuff, the stuff that sticks with you. I'm I'm generally okay with things that that go bang. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't want to be messed up. Uh, but the actual question is. Do you all have any things that others find scary, but you personally do not? Mm. So you think, are you, are you an ironclad man when it comes to certain things? I don't mind most British spiders. Um, <laughs> the only British spider I don't like is the big, is the, the, the this time of year spider, the really big, I think their, their sort of common name is the giant house spider or something um i'll i'll google that now but i think you know the ones um yes you know that they can be sort of as big as yeah they're called the giant house spider so if you give that a google they can be really big i mean (laughs) if they're a bit smaller if they're the size of a 50p and you you know i'm convinced that i could get them up my asshole then i'm fine with it but um good (laughs) when they're the size of uh i don't know a, a sort of a wagon wheel. <laughs> <laughs> That's your limit. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I don't mind sort of spindly spiders, you know, the ones that some people call daddy long legs, even though daddy long legs is definitely a flying creature, not a spider. But mm. you know, the ones, some people really don't like the big spindly ones. I don't mind them at all. And They're any other kind of, I don't mind jumping spiders. I don't mind money spiders. I'm, I'm all right with them. I can quite happily remove them from my house without fear. I could put them, you know, carry them out with my hands if I wanted to. Just the big ones that I um, put a glass over. I'm very Giant jealous of that. I, I, I'm horrified by spiders. But I, now I think about it, I kind of agree on the, the daddy long leg situation because you can literally breathe on them and they, they float, float away. <laughs> they, don't, yeah. they don't really pose any threat. They're just little spindles, spindly leg things that can be wafted away at a moment's notice. They don't pose no mm. threat. Yeah. Uh, what do I? I'm generally, I, I feel like I'm pretty comfortable, like in sp- in dodgy areas at night. I mean, I know there's this is right. like, there's an actual reason to be scared of those places, and maybe I speak from a place of privilege to be able to confidently walk around industrial mm. states at three a.m. or whatever. But I find I I like them. I like it a lot. I, I I'm a big late night man, so I I tend to do my like big shop just before the end. Cl- uh, the shop closes. Like I'm a big proponent of going to asda at like 11 p.m and getting your stuff then it's great it's like another world it's, it's like all the shelves are torn out people are trying to get them with the work and you're there trying to find uh, f- onion rings at the dead of night yeah um, i found yeah, myself but- there before <laughs> <laughs> i'm a big fan of it myself but yeah it yeah. Just means walking home at night and it can be quite it's, it goes through some weird areas and i don't know i find it quite fun and exciting myself <laughs> it's, I, I know what you mean die. yeah <laughs> you're right that obviously we we come from a place of of privilege being well male is the main one um yes. but yeah i putting that aside i mean there are people who there's like subreddits and youtube channels and stuff that are literally just devoted to night walking because people yeah, are really, yeah. like it's just a thing that people are into and whether yeah. that's urban or even rural um yeah, I find it. I do find it a little bit, sl- slightly, slightly creepy or slightly unnerving. But I think that's why I like it. I think that's. Um, I don't always understand when people do or watch things that scare them outright and say that they enjoy that and that it gives them a thrill. Like I don't really like horror movies that much. I don't really like roller coasters particularly. But the one time I can relate to that is when I'm sort of, yeah, walking around somewhere at night and it all looks a bit different uh, to usual and you're like oh what could be here but it's kind of interesting um, we call them yeah, spicy, walks. spicy walks spicy yeah spicy walks That's it. spicy walks yeah. <laughs> love a good spicy walk 
Um, How about you, Ben? I am not scared of making phone calls. Right. Oh, oh, that's a really good one to not yeah, have. Yeah, good for you. And it <laughs> yeah, seems wow. that a lot of people are. Um, I Don't get me wrong. I find it to be irritating in that it's obviously easier to... Or it's less of a time commitment to not call, say, a yeah. business. But equally, if I have to, if I have to call a fucking business, I'm going to call them, and I'm going to give them. A, <laughs> it's usually if I need to give them a piece of my mind about something, uh, something's mm. not working, or uh, I need to f- cancel some kind of recurring payment and stuff like that. But I, I am not. A, I'm not afraid of phone calls. Um, it does seem to be a very common thing. And if you want me to make phone calls <laughs> on your behalf send me money on paypal and i'll do it <laughs> you can hire me to make phone calls for you that's a really good business venture i think i'd definitely yeah. make use of that i'd break a lot of laws I, I think pretending to be other people just just don't get caught you'll be all right just don't get caught yeah that's I'm jealous of that though that's a great one to have i mean i'm not as scared as some people are and some people get like actual anxiety about it and i'm sort of all right but yeah i wish i i was just confident like happy. I don't like complaining whether it's on the phone or not. Do you like? Do you do you have no fear complaining in restaurants, Ben? You good um, at that as well? I've I don't think I've ever complained in a restaurant. I've just because it's not it's the person I complain to. It's not their fault. Yeah. Um, however, if I if I order you know food online or something and it comes and it's bad, I will complain. You know, mm. quite yeah. quite happily. Um, but yeah, I've you know I've I've had I've had takeaway before and certain items have not shown up and i've called the restaurant and said hey this isn't here and yeah. usually they don't they don't lift a fucking finger they just say oh sorry we'll give you some money off next time you order from us I'm like i'm not going to order from you again and <laughs> yeah. also how on earth are you going to remember are you going to keep a record of that i bet you fucking yeah. won't <laughs> so uh but yeah I, I if i have been wronged in some way i really do not mind giving giving a telephone call um oh. we did some what was it? We did some axe throwing uh, the other week. Ooh. Uh, with, oh, yeah, I wasn't there work. for that. But, yeah. And uh, yeah, Ashton booked it and she hadn't heard, she hadn't had an email confirmation through yet. And so I said, <laughs> do you want me, do you want me to call them? She was like, yes, please. Uh, and there was a part of me, while I didn't get confirmation, there was a part of me that knew that offering to, if I offered to call, I would be taken up on that offer. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> because <laughs> I sent an email, they didn't get back to me. Have you called them? No. Well, I'll send another email then. Yeah, I'll, yeah, you know what? I'll just call them. That's fine. I'll, I'll just see if they've them. got a live chat. I really, I really <laughs> don't mind calling them. So uh, I, I'm very much in the camp of like when it, it's, some phone calls are fine. I can make them out thinking. There's sometimes where like if I've got like say I've got a problem like uh, like a, a problem with an order or something like that. I have to like write down every beat of information, rehearse yeah. it like half an hour before I call because I I know like at some point in this conversation they're going to ask me a question. And I'm going to be like oh shit I don't have the answer to that and I just kind of go uh, 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 sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so I need to have all the beats planned out. It might um, be because I've been on the other side of those phone calls that. I know the I I know how bad it can be when people call, yeah. and I know that even if I fall over myself and I don't know what I'm saying, it will still be better than you know <laughs> the worst thing that that person has had to put up with that day. Yeah, that's true. I always find as well as soon as I've started the call, as soon as they said hello and I start speaking, I'm like <laughs> fine. It's it's just the act of like dialing and ringing, being on hold, and then. You can almost tell straight away that, like, you know, most of these people are actually really friendly and actually want to help you. So, yeah, you know, like, oh, hello, how can I help you today? It's like, ah, oh, okay, yeah, I'm happy now. Um, <laughs> Especially if you're nice. There's a, yeah, uh, there's a, a repeated story in my, uh, or joke in my family. I may have even told this on Polly, it's before, but uh, my dad was once, my dad's really good at complaining, like in restaurants or on the phone, like he'll do it. You know, he's he's one of those people. Um, he doesn't make a fuss, like he doesn't look to complain, but if there's a problem, he'll complain. And uh, he had to phone um, Talk Talk um, to do something about, I think the the old lady who lived over the over the road, something about her phone or something, or I, I don't know what it was. So he rang them up and he was like being put on hold and he's being passed to like the next department and then, oh, all right, I'll put you through to da da da. And he was on there for like half an hour and he was getting really mad. And finally he got through to someone and uh, he he said to them, 
Oh, uh, do you mind? Uh, could you could you tell me about your complaints procedure, please? Because I, I do want to make a complaint. And she's like, "Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What's the issue?" And he said, "Well, it's ironic that you called Talk Talk because I don't seem to be able to talk talk to anybody <laughs> oh, <God>. today." <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so that's uh, an, an oft repeated thing. I mean, I should be clear as well. He wasn't saying it. He wasn't mean to the person. He was sort of laughing. He was saying, "Well, I'd like to complain about the, you know." The business as a whole. He's not. He's a nice man and doesn't complain. He to, is a nice like, man. Like you, like you say, Ben. It's not. It's never that person's fault, is it? Whether you're in a restaurant or yeah, you're you're ringing up a company because someone's fucked up your order. It's not the person who's on the phone lines who's made the mistake. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would. And to be clear, in a restaurant, if if the wrong food's brought out or the wrong order, I would. I wouldn't complain, but I would say, "Hello, can you fix this, please?" Yeah, I've never gone out yeah. of my way to to say, "Can I just." I just want to say this was fucking terrible. I've never done that, no. <laughs> uh, but I, you know, if if the wrong food comes, I will I will get someone's attention and get it sorted. Yeah, which is also I Hero think an Achilles need. heel of of some people. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, you're a big brave boy. We'll, well, we're all we're all big up, brave boys. Sure you, yeah, in our own ways, in our own ways, yeah. but Ben more so because he's not scared of a phone. <laughs> <laughs> Look at us, hey? Our our great grandparents fought in the war. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Michael won't call the bank to sort out a, a, a <laughs> transaction he didn't make. <laughs> it's fine; they can have the money. Scary, <laughs> scary out there. Uh, ben, would you like to continue your big, strong boy energy and sure. <laughs> to give us a spooky tale? I, or I do. I have a spooky thing. It's time for the second annual Spook or Spock. Oh, oh yeah! I don't know. Oh if, my god! For those of you listening at home, remember, but this time last year. I introduced a very silly game called Spook or Spock. And what I have in front of me are a number of quotes. One of them is from Spock off of Star Trek. And the other one is a quote from a spooky movie. And Ooh. you two have to tell me which one is Spook and which one is Spock. Now, mm. I have mixed in a couple of curveballs here. One, a couple of quotes that aren't necessarily from horror movies, just to throw you off the, the scent a little more. So you will have to identify those as well as they come through. Uh, also, I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, the literally hundreds of people who have tagged us in the Billy Ray Cyrus is dating someone who was on the Hannah Montana show tweet. We have seen it. Thank you very much. You can stop. Please stop. Okay. Is, uh, is that scandal confirmed? Or? I think so. That's what everyone is saying. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it's finally confirmed. That's oh, what everyone's dear. saying. Uh, so more to come, but you don't, we are aware. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, first set of quotes. Are you ready? Yes. Let's go. Quote one. Insufficient facts always invite danger. And the second Ooh. quote. Alas, how terrible is wisdom when it brings no profit to the wise. Which Ooh. is a spook and which is a spark? They both sound pretty spocky. I'd say the yeah. first one is maybe more spocky and less spooky. I think the second one's more spocky. I couldn't imagine anyone saying "alas" in a horror film. <laughs> yeah, maybe so, but I'll I'll stick with my guns. Well, the first point goes to Peter because, oh. of course, mm. "alas, how terrible is wisdom when it brings no profit to the wise?" is Lewis Cipher from Angel Heart, which I am told is a horror movie. <laughs> right, okay. And the other one, of course, is Spock. The next one. Computers make excellent and efficient servants, but I have no wish to serve under them. And my mission responsibilities range over the entire operation of the ship, so I am constantly occupied. Which is a spook and which is a Spock? Mm. Oh, God. Mm. Computers make excellent and efficient servants, but I have no wish to serve under them. And my I mean, mission responsibilities range over the entire operation of the ship, so I am constantly occupied. They both sound I'll say the second spooky. one is Spock this time. Mm. I'm going to say the first one is Spock. Just, I mean, controlling ship is very Spocky, but also I could see the computer. The computer. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to go with that one, Spock. Could be a pirate ship, a spooky pirate ship. Mm. So the first one is the Spock. Hey. Computers make excellent and efficient servants, but I have no wish to serve under them. The other one was HAL 9000 from 2001 A Space Odyssey. Oh. oh. Of course. Of course. Oh. Next one. 
We survive by remembering, but sometimes we survive by forgetting. And fascinating is a word I use for the unexpected. In this case, I would think interesting would suffice. <laughs> I think the second one is Spock. First one, Spook. Yeah, I'm going to say that as well. The first one kind of sounds like the dramatic last line at the end of a movie yeah. where everyone survived. <laughs> it was Get beauty it. killed the beast. <laughs> well, you're both right. The first one was Dr. Sibling slash Cyberling from The Uninvited, which apparently is also mm. a horror movie. So there we are. <laughs> Next one. May I say that I have not thoroughly enjoyed... Hang on, let me try that again. May I say that I have not thoroughly enjoyed serving with humans? I find their illogic and foolish emotions a constant irritant. And humans are odd. They think order and chaos are somehow opposites and try to control what won't be. But there is grace in their failings. I think you missed that. Oh. God, these are mm. tough. Ah. Uh... Oh. I'm going to say, you go first, Mikey, you go first. I, I'm going to say the first one is the Spock and the second is the Spook, personally. Yeah, I think that's what I was thinking as well. Well, it was one of my curveballs, but you identified it. The second one is Vision from Avengers Age of Ultron. Aha. Uh -huh. What? <laughs> yes. So not a spook, just a curveball. Oh, that's a good curveball. We've got three left. Next one. The world of men will fall and all will come to darkness and my city to ruin. And in critical moments, men sometimes see exactly what they wish to see. First one, I've got to say, is not, I've got to assume is not Spock because of, he said, my city to ruin. I mean, maybe they went to flipping vol Volcania at some point, but I don't know. <laughs> mm. I mean, it could be a metaphorical city. you know, Yeah, it could be. My city. I'm... Can I have the second one once more? Of course you can. In critical moments, men sometimes see exactly what they wish to see. I'm going to say... The f I'm going to say this, the second one, Spock. I'm going to, going to, I'm going to try, try and go against the what feels right. And Peter, you think the second one is Spock as well? Uh, yes, because I think the city is not Spock, yeah. Well, you're both bang on again, and you've managed to dodge another curveball. That first <laughs> one was Boromir from The Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring. Oh, yeah. God. Next up, I could not deprive you of the revelation of all that you could accomplish together, of a friendship that will define you both in ways you cannot yet realise. And I see now that the circumstances of one's birth are irrelevant. It is what you do with the gift of life that determines who you are. Oh, I feel like I might have heard that second quote before, yeah. but it could. I mean, I don't. I've never watched any Star Trek, but it could be you know the kind of quote that you that gets shared around from Star Trek, or it could be from a film that I've seen. Mm. Not sure, mm. Mikey. What do you think? I want to say the first one, Spock, and the second is Spook. I'm feeling like it's some kind of like epiphany moment, maybe where they've overcome the evil, or the evil uh, realizes its true powers. I became this. Blah, blah. Could you just read the second quote again, Ben? Of course. Please. I see now that the circumstances of one's birth are irrelevant. It is what you do with the gift of life that determines who you are. I chose to take life with my gift of life. Oh. I feel that's from a different movie that I might have seen. So I'll say the first one, Spock. Again, you've both dodged a curveball because that second what? quote is Mewtwo from Pokemon the first movie. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, I think I might have seen memes. <laughs> <laughs> Memes of it on yeah. Twitter. And oh. final one. After a time, you may find that having is not so pleasing a thing after all as wanting. And I will say now, however objectively, that human teleportation, molecular, molecular decimation, <laughs> breakdown, reformation is inherently purging. <laughs> I mean, the second one sounds like the, the transmat teleporter thing that they use, right? Mm. I'm going to say the second one, Spock. Yeah, I think second one, Spot as well. Spot? Spot. Spot, uh, spot, the, spot. The, the dog. <laughs> well, yeah, this, I've got what? you there. That was, of what? course, Seth Brundle from The Fly. Oh, oh, well done. The first one was the Spock. And there we are. Uh, that is this year's edition of Spook or Spock. Nice. That last well one was great. Yeah. I really thought Thank I'd you get you with much, the Pokemon man. one, but no. 
Very good. Very good. <laughs> yeah, very I knew good. I'd heard it somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get oh. you with a different Pokemon one next year. Yes. Oh, well, we'll be ready. Uh, would you boys like one last question? Mm-hmm. Spocket Monsters. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> yes, Spock- it yeah. Perfect. <laughs> uh, we have a question from they who stay quiet in the void um, at the underscore Farwell on Twitter. They say, you've died. <laughs> who or where will you be haunting? And what version from your life will you present as? I like this one because, I mean, the haunting question is quite a, quite a, a common one. But I've never thought about, a, like, because ghosts don't age. They just, mm. they stay, like, they're eternal in their form. Let's say we have a choice over our form. I'm instantly drawn towards like twelve year old me at the height of my Geordie. <laughs> <laughs> just like a little a little small child with a ball cut running around <laughs> speaking Geordie nonsense. Dressed as Mary Poppins, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> Mookie's blood. Maybe. Mookie's blood. Mookie's blood. Can you not hear that? It's coming from the walls. Began. 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 Um, I don't know who I'd haunt though. That's an interesting one. It's it's always is is the the question of am I there to entertain someone or comfort mm. them or just ruin their lives and be a blight on their existence? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I I could think of a a, a a really unethical way of sort of gaslighting someone. It would be <laughs> to find someone who is really interested in the Jeff the Mongoose story. I'm sure there's some academic out there who knows that you know who's like written papers on it and he's really into it uh find someone who's obsessed with the story and i would choose my form to just be invisible and then i would go to their house and just sort of whisper them to uh, whisper at them in the night saying you know i'm living in the walls uh i i am from i was born in india and i whatever else he used to say it's jeff he's back he's back yeah hmm i don't hmm I don't know. I've, I would probably go with modern day version of myself uh, just <laughs> yeah. because I feel like the various iterations of past me are ones that I I have moved away from, you know? I don't mm. want to be necessarily stuck as them forever. Yeah. So I don't would... Be, don't want your af- afterlife to be cast as something you don't want to be representative of yourself. Well, exactly. I don't want to be stuck Peak as... Peak Ben that's going to hold. I be stuck as season one Ben, you know? <laughs> yeah. I've got to... Still finding his footing in the pilot. And now we're season three Ben, where everything's cemented and golden. Exactly. That's what I want. Also, I've just... While I was looking up a photo of Spock for the, uh, the thread <laughs> on Twitter, uh, there's a photo that looks exactly like trot from uh, hat <laughs> right. films and apparently the of spock as as spock actor ethan peck talks uh taking on iconic role of spock for star trek discovery now i'm sure we're way behind the times and lots of other people have already made this uh made this connection but how much does this look like trot Oh my god! Oh yeah, I think I might have even seen Trot post that photo before and say yes, what? I get oh, it. Yes, it is me. Um, that's him, right? Yeah. yeah, that's literally him, just with a wig on. <laughs> Do we? I mean, he was in Kill Keith, wasn't he, as an extra? Yeah, true. There you go. He got noticed. He's moved up. Apparently, Ethan Peck is uh, looks just like Trot. So <laughs> there we are. So that that's what I would. That's the form I would take. Ethan Peck as Spock. <laughs> <laughs> perfect i i don't i still don't know who i want to haunt i think i'm just gonna maybe i'll just go for i want a radio personality to haunt so I, my tales can be told on the airwaves but maybe oh what oh the the one who looks and sa- sounds like me from cultaholic i've forgotten his name my god um but looks oh and no sounds like you oh, i think like we both have a laugh um you mean and- andrew, Is it andrew? Not Andrew, no. My God, why can I not remember the dude's name? Help me. You both um, have a laugh. Tom Campbell? Tom Campbell, that's you know, it. I think people have said, look, it's well, sound like Tom Campbell. We've well, got similar uh, colouring, I suppose. Colouring. <laughs> you know, because uh, you're like a yeah. cat, yes. There's a somewhat yes. similar energy to us, I guess. Similar but, fur. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm going to haunt him. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to come for you. Oh, and he's always oh, just going to hear his 
Pagan. <laughs> I why I man. There's a little Geordie ghost. Oh, I feel like they're, they're underrepresented in, in in classical literature. It's all spooky posh ghosts. Yeah. It's yeah. time the working class took took their throne and and echo, echoed through the wind with their you seen the price of cool. <laughs> <laughs> Are we? So that's it. That's what. Oh. That's what I want. <laughs> well, I think we've done it, guys. Thank you so much mm. for the questions and the things, and thank you all at home so much for listening to this podcast. Uh, Michael, there's no shop, is there? No shop, but work is underway. We have we have discussed, we have planned, we are reaching out. Um, so don't worry, the shop is coming, but it's just not there right now. Why don't you treat yourself to a Dave Benson Phillips badge on eBay if you want to support the community? That he'd love that. He'd love the VHS that. edition of A Bridge Too Far. Yeah, yeah. Buy still something nice in the interim, but no official way to get our stuff just yet. But it's coming. No, we're we're actively sorting it. Uh, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, all dot com forward slash vidiots vidiots official. Also, and I've changed the Bitly link here, but bit dot ly forward slash vidiots discord, all lowercase, nice and easy to type out. If you want to go check <laughs> out our Discord, I want to thank Tommy uh, for modding it for us. Uh, go say hello. There are people in there, and they want to see you. Go hang out. Mm. Uh, Twitch.tv yeah. forward slash Vidiots Official. We stream there sometimes. And of course, streamlabs.com forward slash Podiots Donations. Donate, donate, sorry, three pounds or more to get a shout out at the beginning and the end of the show and join Pod Squad. We really appreciate it. It helps an awful, awful lot. What you got, Mikey? Siri, play Wave of Death. Brothless Ramen for Wankers. Clit Eastwood. Dave can't come to the phone. Double, double, toil in trouble tubs. It is spook time, my dudes. Ah, spooky Mr. Black. Spooky McSpookson. Ben's weak upper body. Spooky it. Mr. Blobby goes on the run. Jack 494 and Lord Cost of Living Crisis of Itch. Also, Podiots presents their butts. Spooky name Nick Gage. The Jacobite. Weddy Feber the Spooky Boy. Put your fucking clothes in me. Crushing existential dread. Night of the living changed. Spookworth, who was unbelievably generous. Thank you, Spookworth. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Stephen Skodes, Mr. Blobby Butt Skeleton. Ian Jasper was born in 1965. Kermit Boo Pog and Fun Trust Tom. Sorry, I'm here and I'm ready. Uh, we've also got Bartek Sega CD. Hang on. Bartek <laughs> Sega CD's Nuts, uh, Garlic Pudding and Chips, Gone to Synagogue with Simon Myler, B&Q Carpet Roll Trauma, Normal Name Nick Gage, Adolf Sex, Set Your Cocks Back, Prince Beefcakes, Mr. Macca, Dicking Dom in Da Bungalow, Don Ako 7, The Extremely Generous Your Boy Milo. Thank you, Your Boy Milo. And it is pumpkin spice beans time. Thank you, everyone. That's your pod squad for this week. Streamlabs.com forward slash poddy. It's donations, three pounds or more. Shout out the beginning of the end of the show. Blah, blah, blah. What's out mm. on Vidiots this week, four years ago, Peter? Uh, well, we begin with Marvel's Spider-Man Upside Down Challenge, where Ben felt sick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, worst games ever, Bad Boys 2. Rubbish Games Bonanza, the ZX Spectrum featuring Boof. Uh, Vidiot's live Twitch stream Swamp Sim slash Luigi's Mansion slash Sonic Dreams collection. Uh, Fighting Women WWE 2K19. So that's when we were made as female wrestlers um, in 2K19 and we had some wrestles. Mm. Um, uh, We've got Vidiot's live Twitch stream Dark Souls Remastered 3 from the early days of Babs. Podiot's episode 17 Great Stuff. Uh, post some tat number 35 Golden Bat Buddha Medieval Ruling Age of Empires 2 Part 1 uh, so that's the start of the Prove It we got rid of Prove It from the video titles at some point um, yeah it helped that's what that is <laughs> made all the difference yeah <laughs> it really helped uh, worst games ever All Star Water Sports Life on the Edge Gang Beasts and Medieval Ruling Age of Empires 2 Part 2 so that's the second part of the Let's Play and uh, next time I'm sure we'll be talking all about the live action ch- or well, I'm not talking all about it, but mentioning the live action challenge. So that's your lot for it. this fortnight. 
Nice. Wonderful stuff. Mikey, where are you on the internet? At Paraboy on Twitter is the best place to keep up to date with all my doings and stuff. And I stream once in a blue moon on Twitch. Paraboy as well there. So go check it out. Have a, have a look. See why don't you? Yes, do it. And Peter, where are we on the internet? Uh, we are at that Peter Austin and at confused underscore dude on Twitter. Uh, I'm also on Instagram. And we are both at uh, Team Triple Jump on Twitch and YouTube and also Facebook and Twitter. Um, and you can go over there and see lots more silly content and video game stuff if you like. Absolutely. Why not leave us a five star review on your platform of choice? It helps something to do with Al Gore's rhythms. We'd really appreciate it. And it doesn't cost a penny. So please go and do that. Thank you very much. Uh, do we have a final question before we bugger off? Yeah, uh, what are you doing for Halloween, Ben? Stop, stop. Oh. You can't you can't do this. Uh, mm. It's too late Okay, now. well, everyone at home, what's Ben doing for Halloween? Yeah, <laughs> let us know what Ben's doing. <laughs> I hope, well, if one of them guesses, I'd be really impressed. <laughs> <laughs> and scared. Ooh, Ooh. Oh, bloody hell. Thanks so much for listening, everybody. Stay safe out there. Spook bye. Ooh, goodbye. Ooh.